Well, Dima, how do you feel after um, that result and such a big day for two of your, you know, I suppose favourite players? Yeah, it's been a um, it's been a, a challenging week emotionally, you know, and physically. Really, like you sort of think about the letdown this week when we we probably eliminated ourselves from finals, and and then you have the retirement of two superstars of our club in Asprey and, and Hooley. It's been a um, yeah, it's been a big week, and obviously, you know the. Uh, Clarko, his last game as well, and then to have the finish that we did, it was just such a. It probably sums up the year for us. To be fair, I would think it was a. Uh, it's a real feeling playing, you know, once again at the G with no crowd, and then to have the uh, the result was a bit of a hollow feeling as well. So, look, it is what it is. It's the the situation we're in, but um, you know we'll uh, we'll reset on the off season and come back bigger and better. Two thousand twenty two, yeah, twenty twenty two, I should say. You took your headset off, it looked like there, Damien, in the last, with about five minutes to go. Did you think this was over and could you sort of believe what happened from there? Uh, I, can't, I actually I went to the toilet, to be fair. I needed a tinkle. So that probably was the reason I took the headset off. But, um, oh, look, the boys, to their credit, yeah, they, they kept fighting. We sort of asked for that. And I thought there were stages where we looked really, really dangerous. We just couldn't quite get the scoreboard reward, reward that, we, um, that we needed at various stages. You know, I thought... It probably summed up our year a little bit how a lot of their goals look really easy and ours look really hard. Um, so I've got some work to do on that part. But I was really pleased that the guys fought it out for both Dave and Bash. Um, you know, we didn't have a win, but we managed to nullify the result. So it was a it was a reasonably positive way to finish off in the year. And now yeah, I'm really pleased with some of the efforts of our younger players as well, which will be a real positive for our fans to sit back and enjoy. Spoken about I mean, the tiredness, Dimmer, of being in campaigns for so long. And uh, are you looking forward to the break? And how do you think you'll, you know, spend it? And what's your thoughts on what you need to do next year to reboot? Yeah, yes and no. It, it has been a long four years. You look at, you know, the vast majority of clubs that, that have won some flags over a period of time. It, it does, you know, effectively add another season onto what the other sides have played. So there's certainly been some challenges for that. You know, our guys just, but they tried their best and we tried to, I uh, went for the whip a couple of times and we just couldn't quite get the result we're after. Significant injury to the, you know, the playing list through periods of time and, and form just wasn't quite what we were after. Um, but I think our guys will enjoy the break. Don't get me wrong, they'd, they'd much rather be playing finals and, you know, competing as hard as they could. But um, I, I think they're exhausted. So they'll reset, they'll recharge, you know, Coaching group will do the same. We'll look at some things that work, some areas of our game that we have to improve. The game certainly looks different than what it has from the previous years, so we've got some challenges there. Um, but I think the, the positive for us, from a silver lining point of view, is we are... Uh, he's crashed my press conference again. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. joined... Um... Clarkson's, Clarkson's wall. Unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're playing for ninth place. You got it on audio, though. This is like this is a world of sport. Coaches corner. You got both the coaches. Fire away, lads. Well, I've had about five, so now it's going to be all you. <laughs> we're trying to get the sponsor things in as well. Oh, I think. No, 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 just like just like this day. Fire. When do you have your first glass of red, boys? We just need Lou Richards at the back to give us, you know, <laughs> get a four, four and twenty fives and what, what was it? You got the ham and the aquilas. Move the target. <laughs> you, you can't help yourself, Alistair. Seriously, uh, Dima, what what is Clarko's departure? What have you reflected on in thinking that Clarko is ending up at Hawthorne? Oh, it's funny because without Clarko, to be perfectly honest, um, I wouldn't have gone into coaching. You know, when he first got the, the job in 2004, I think it was, you know, he gave me a phone call and, yeah, it's funny, he got me two jobs. He got me a job at William Buck Accountancy Firm first and foremost. And then he, um, yeah, then he said, would you like to come and give me a hand at, at the Hawks? And I wasn't sure whether I actually really enjoy, would enjoy coaching, but um, the way Clarko did it, it was sort of inspirational in a way. He had to give me a couple of kicks in the butt on the way to get me. He and, he and Viney in that first year, they weren't great. <laughs> Jeez. We, uh, we did, he never liked to go overseas, did uh, yeah. If there's one thing I've taught him to do, it's just like go and, go and explore the world and try yeah. and find out some new ideas. He, he'd get about 
three days into an overseas trip and want to come home. It's a two week <laughs> trip. And, <laughs> back to, he was relentless. Back to the, back to the family. And, um, yeah, that's it. It is. It's a funny thing you learn about him. He, he's relentless in nature. Um, he will overturn every stone to try and get a result. And yeah, it's funny. That's what I learned, learned off him to, to innovate, um, to learn, and, and to pass on that knowledge to your, to your team and to your staff. And yeah, it's a thing he does incredibly well. And it's why he goes out the great and coach of all time. <laughs> Damien, you spoke about um, Clarko's relentless nature. Do you expect that to see that relentless nature back in, in the coaching box? Maybe not next year, but soon after? Can we just get us plug in for United? Yeah, we just, we just there we go. Yeah. United, very good. <laughs> Fantastic <laughs> energy company. See us. <laughs> so is that question to me or to Clarko? Yeah, that's yeah, that's question to you. Yeah, do you expect to be coaching against um, against Clarko again at some stage over the next year or the year after? Or? Oh, listen, I, I, I presume so. I don't think he'll ever be lost to the game. It's, you know, that's the thing. you got one of the greatest minds in the modern era sitting beside me and um, he'll, you know, take a moment, take a breath and, and then get back into something. Once again, if it's coaching, it's coaching. If not, he's got a lot of things he could do, this man beside me. He's very, very we, smart. We actually had a plan together to go overseas and <laughs> go and help the New England Patriots try and win another title. But Tom Brady nicked off to... Yeah. The bucket. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, we'll, we'll hopefully do something together sometime. Be good um, in the future. Yeah. Would you would you have him at Richmond, Damien? Bloody joking, Archie. <laughs> I've just learned to relax. God, <laughs> mate. Oh, look at. I'd love to have him at Richmond. At the end of the day, it's always good to have great people and great coaches. But the fact of the matter is, he's got bigger fish to fry than uh, than try and help me out at this stage. But. You know, I'm not sure he'll be down the farm. He'll be driving conk crazy. He'll be digging potholes and trying to build fences and burning himself at some stage. So I'm just going to sit on the tractor. Sit on the tractor. There you go. <laughs> How much have you enjoyed coaching against each other over the over these sort of last ten years? Well, not very much in the week leading up to the game. He, it is his birthday during the week. I gave him a call. Is there any chance to give me a call back? Um, but. Uh, you know, we 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 had a we we always had a deal that in the the week or two leading into the the game where we coach one another, we'd just steer clear of one another, and then whoever lost, um, we'd usually usually steer clear for another week or ten days as well because we both get ourselves <laughs> <laughs> we both get ourselves into the losers' cave, and we don't we don't resurface for at least three days after the game, so um, yeah. we, we tend to tend to steer clear of one another for a while, and then. Um, we uh, resume our friendship again after that. Had <laughs> stayed to... such good mates, Timmy, given given uh, Clarko's relentless nature. I missed the first part of that. How have you managed to stay such good mates, given Clarko's relentless nature in the competitive <laughs> business you're in? <laughs> Stop kidding yourself, you mate. You don't reckon this bloke's relentless? <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's won three flags too, you know. He's he's, uh, he's just as bad as me. He's just, he's, he just hasn't punched the hole in the coach's box. Yeah, well, not that you've seen anyway. <laughs> oh, it, it, it's funny. I think, you know, once again, like we've been through stages together where both of us have struggled, you know, but at the end of the day, we're just such good mates and we've got a great, you know, support network around us that coaching is one part of our lives, but it's not the strongest part of our lives. It's important to us, but it's not the most important thing to us. And, you know, we'll always help out the other. Um, you know, the fact of the matter is when I was at a time of need in 2016, first person on the phone helped me through things was was the guy right beside me and it sums him up as a person, as a man. Um, so, you know, coaching, uh, you know, even today, to me, it's you're coaching against Clarko, but you're not coaching against one of my best mates. It's, you know, it's a lot more than that. Who's got the worst temper? Oh, please. Killer's <laughs> 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 <Ridiculous> question. <laughs> Yeah, you forget we mine's, saw his mine's plane, a short Damien. fuse. He carries his a little bit longer. I, yeah. I, mine's gone, and I'm on with it. He, he carries it a little bit longer. Yeah, there was one time today. I reckon Rob, you might be able to. There was a double switch. Yeah, yeah I could hear it from our box. Yeah. Like, okay, they're gonna try and switch now, you blokes. <laughs> how, how do you seriously, Kaka? In the sense, how, how do you sort of feel at the moment? Um, is it like a weight off your shoulders, or? You're sort of looking forward to joining the unemployment I'll tell you what, he's a weight off my shelves. I don't have to last, watch the last or review the last 10 minutes of that game. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking forward to just having a couple of shervies in the early part of this week rather than watching the game of footy. You know? That's the thing about you know coaching is that probably with, with your own side, uh, by the time you watch the game live, then you review the game at least once, then you've got to watch your, your, 
Box Hill team play. Uh, you probably watch an opposition team play um, live on that weekend as well, and then uh, twice during the week. You know, we, the coaches that are around the AFL uh, probably watch five or six games a footy a week, and um, in each each one of those, it takes uh, takes three or four hours to actually review and, and analyze the game. So it's an enormous workload um, that all the all the coaches have, and so that's that's one <laughs> that's one part of it. Is it's it's tiring. Um, it's relentless. Yeah, when you've got to cope with that for 17 years, it just becomes um, a part of the game that whilst you know that you have to do it to uh, have success as a, as a club, it's, it's not a part of the game you actually really enjoy, but you just need to get it done. And, um, yeah, we get great, great support from our, um, our coaching network at the club and the administration of the club, but it's just, it's just tough yards. And uh, if you want to be good, you just have to, have to do the hard yards. A different reason... Are you both? Are you both glad the season's over? Um, yeah, I think it's been a tough year for um, for both of our both of our clubs. You know, to, to Richmond's credit, last year um, they still won the flag under enormous duress, and there's going to be another team that wins the flag flag this year. Um, it's just it's just so unusual. It, 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 the whole finish to even even today's game, um, anti climax. You know, it ends up being a draw, but uh, no crowd, you know, there's some um, no no atmosphere in terms of when anyone kicks a goal. I mean, the, the, the sooner um, the sooner our, our lives sort of accepts the fact that this virus is here for good, like many other viruses that have been here for decades, um, the sooner we accept the fact that it's pointless trying to get zero on this virus. It's going to be here with us for a long time. So let's work out how we can manage it as a society and get everything back to normal. You know, there's, there's industries that are just being crippled uh, by these shutdowns, and um, the and that's that. Uh, fortunately, AFL footy hasn't been implicated enormously, but um, still, we can't play footy the way that we like to play footy. Mm. Um, and um, yeah, the, comp- the competition, whilst it's gone ahead, it's been compromised enormously. And the sooner we can get back to um, to playing with crowds and that sort of stuff, and, and manage this this uh, dreadful virus that's out there, then the better it's going to be for everyone, particularly though those industries that are unbelievably implicated by, by the virus. What advice uh, would you give to like a, well, Sorry, John, you go. I've just got one question, Alistair. Obviously, yesterday you spoke about um, potentially leaning towards having next year off. The big question, I guess, in the industry is would you accept the call, say, from Collingwood or Carlton over the next week or so and just to find your interest in determining whether you'd want to perhaps head there next year? Yeah, I've, I've been doing this, this caper for 17 years. And as I said, um, as I said uh, yesterday, I think in the, in the, in the press conference, um, unfortunately, whatever's been said in the last three or four weeks hasn't, hasn't ended up materialising the, the following couple of days. So it's, it's difficult to say. But um, as I said yesterday, my, my intention is to have a spell from the game um, to assess uh, my my family and um, the network of uh, people around me, extended family and friends, have made enormous sacrifices for me to do what I've done for the last seventeen years. And it's not just seventeen years. You know, I've been I've been chasing this this AFL dream for forty five years. Whether it was chasing it to become an AFL player, and then I played for ten years, and then I've been coaching for the last twenty five. So um it's time for me to have a spell um i'm happy to pass the baton on to mitch as the uh, as the next coach for our footy club and uh to be fair um i'd uh I'd, I'd like to just spend the next 12 months working out what the next chapter is and i've said all along that chapter might be um inside of footy outside of footy um inside the afl or outside the afl it might be uh, inside australia or outside australia i don't really know it's more difficult the outside australia part because of covid right at the present time but uh, this this guy knows. We, we laughed about it before, but we we both, uh, because of our travels, love to love to travel and know what else is out there. Uh, but because of AFL footy, we've been unable to explore it. Now he's not going to go anywhere too soon in terms of um, his contract with Richmond. But right at the present time, this affords me the great opportunity to um, have a look at what else is out there, and um, we're going to take the time to do that. What advice would you give to Sam Mitchell and Clarko if you? As he heads off into taking over from you, um, well, it's a well, it's a, a difficult question to answer. You know, it's better 
uh, to better ask Mitch on the direction that he wants to take the club. It's for, for mine, it's a, uh, it's a baton change. You know, I think we've been able to show in the second half of the year that there's a, uh, there's enough emerging talent at our footy club to, um, to move forward. And uh, the competition is just so close and, and so even. And as you've seen this year, you know, I couldn't believe at the start of the year. And I don't think anyone could that uh, the Tigers wouldn't have made the eight this, this year. You know, that, that's the that's how close the competition is, and you just need a, a few injuries and yeah, you know, a bit of um, bit of instability around um, when you're playing your games and and what's going on with those games and um, that for for things to be very very difficult for you to compete on a regular basis and um, so yeah, you know, Mitch has uh, Mitch has got to um, work out what his uh, what his vision is for the footy club, uh, where he wants to take it, and is uh, it's. Um, it's his responsibility now to write a new chapter for the Hawthorne Footy Club. There's been some great chapters um, written. I've been really fortunate to be a part of the of the last one, but um, it's time for us to uh, renew and, and and get a new chapter written. Right, guys, we might go to the last question. Where's the biggest improvement come the last eight weeks, Parker? Right? What would you put it down to? Great coaching. <laughs> 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 yeah, I wish it, I wish it was. No, we. we so we continue to inject some younger players, and they just they just take some time to um, to get a, a, a feel for the game. And um, we saw that with the with the Tigers today. You know, they, they took the opportunity to to play and blood a lot of youngsters today. That um, yeah, I'm sure um, yeah they got a really good insight into into some of those some of those guys and how they're going to be become good players for the for the Tigers in the years to come. And we're doing exactly the same. Um, yeah, we've uh, we've been we know where we're at as a footy club, so we've been blooding those ones for a little bit longer than the ties because they were right in the right in the window of trying to play uh, trying to play finals. But um, you know, we um, we think that the, the the second half of the year we've been able to get a little bit of continuity, a good look at the the competition and how the games played, and uh, we've been able to make some adjustments and play a little bit better in the second half of the year. But whether it changes again next year. Um, We'll just have to wait and see, but um, yeah, that's uh, that's for Mitch and Dimmer and the other sixteen coaches to work out now, and I can have a have a spell and um, see whether um, the the passion can be ignited again. Well, it's just a quick one to finish. I'm just on Craig McRae to you both. Uh, he's in contention for for a senior job at the moment. What did he bring to both of your football clubs, uh, and what qualities has he got? You go first. Dimmer. Oh, listen, he's an outstanding coach in his own right. You know, he's very. Well drilled, incredibly smart, articulates well. You know, him and Adam Kingsley, you know, are two of the coaches that I think are both in in the uh, the running for that job. And I think Collingwood will be well served with either of those two. They're wonderful coaches in their own right, good man managers. Um, so I think both of those guys will be a, a positive for the Pies if they go down that path. Yeah, and what I, what I love about those lads is I know Kings as well too, and and there's other guys in the uh, in the in the mix for that role as well, but. Um, they've just been patient, especially mm. Kingers and um, and Fly. They've been in the game for a long period of time. You know, they've been around uh, two or three clubs. Um, and it's such a it's such a hard cape. I know that I know that both of us and um, and a couple of others got got opportunities early. But the first the first four or five years are really really tough yards to get through. And you know, I I, I could have been sacked after my second or third year, and uh, and Dimmer what nearly was at the end of two thousand and sixteen, and but that's the unfortunate part. We we hear out of Carlton at the moment with Teague. It's just like, oh, you just you just wish that that clubs would hold their line on this for a little bit because it's it's just so difficult the um, the industry and it's not just the coach anymore. It's the it's the whole group, the coaching group and the club really in the alignment and their philosophy and where they want to go and how they how they want to go about it. And um, both both those lads have just stood the test of time in terms of um, sitting back and viewing. Um, AFL clubs and how they work, and and also um, engaging in different roles across many clubs. You know, they've been development coaches, they've been assistant coaches, different lines, um, and they're really well equipped now to uh, to take the next step. Both of the, both of those guys are in their mid to late forties, and um, you know, good good family men, um, really really highly regarded by the, their colleagues that they work with and the players that they work with. And by the way, I think they'd be uh, they'd be great AFL senior coaches. On that note, we might leave it there, guys. Thanks, guys. Thank you, guys. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs>